Welcome to the Technic Pack Watermill Tutorial. Alright, we'll get right to it. Let's make a watermill. To make a watermill, you're going to need a generator. We'll go back over generator real quickly. You make a furnace. Take the furnace, make an iron furnace, either taking the furnace with five um, iron ingots, makes an iron furnace, or eight iron ingots. And then you take the iron furnace, you take three refined iron and an RE battery, makes a generator. RE battery is 210, 210, 410 total, two redstone with a copper cable on top. Take your generator and you put four sticks around the corners and four planks on the compass points. Gives you a water mill. Water mills are relatively cheap, very reliable. You drop them in water or you drop water in them and you have power. There's no day-night cycle, there's no variabilities. Unlike wind with the variabilities and solar with the lack of power during rain or evening cycles. So let's get to some of the basics. The water mill shows a little water reservoir shaped like a bucket. You have an input space and you have a charge point. You can drop a battery in here and charge. Otherwise it outputs power directly just like any other generator to any adjacent space. We have a bat box here with zero power. I'm going to grab just a couple of buckets. Because I'm on creative I cannot refill these buckets or at least I haven't been able to. So we're going to drop the water in here. You see the reservoir fill. Two empty buckets, almost half a reservoir. We're building, er, building energy here. Generating energy. About a thousand per bucket. So if you're sitting here with a water source, infinite water source, two by two, you can sit here with just a bucket or two and constantly fill this. You can call it the poor man's uh, generator system if you want. It really works. It's a pain to constantly feed it water. Um, I'll go ahead and address there are some automatic bucket filling systems. They're so, so expensive in materials that I just can't imagine why you'd go to that trouble except for fun and it looks like a lot of fun. I haven't built one. Um, two, without that system you really can't do anything other than feed this manually if you're going to feed water buckets. So there's still about a half a reservoir left. We've built quite a bit. Early on if you want to build a water mill and just feed it buckets, if you have one bucket you can get some really cheap power. Again, pain in the rear. So let's get to some of our examples here of how uh, water is, or um, yeah, how water is generated, how water energy is generated. So we have a three by three by one space here. Water mills generate energy by the water surrounding them. It's not the flow of water. Here we have a single water stream. We're going to drop the generator there. Actually blocks the flow. And we're going to drop a generator in the middle of this square. Now we're going to connect bat boxes and we're going to compare the energy output. Here we have very minimal, very minimal power output. Come on four, you can do it, there it is. And here, it looks like roughly four times the output. When this goes to six, we should have about 24 in the other one. Come on, there we go. Oh, so it's not quite four times. Uh, let's see what's next. Let's change this. We get the one water stream passes water all the way around this generator. Let's start over. Sometimes I have found, much like um, wind, there seems to be a glitch sometimes that, yes, your power generation stops altogether. So we'll replace the water mills and start this test over with a different setup. Okay, when that gets to 10, 10. So these are roughly, probably exactly the same output. 20, 20. Yeah, we can try our meter on here as well. Okay, it's so it's so low. Let's wait and see if it'll show anything. It's showing a half over 73 ticks. Now it's showing negative. Okay, so that's pretty glitchy. Um, Let's switch 58, 58. So basically what this means is in this setup, <clears throat> which we could shorten it, but you have one water source. 
and the water flows around so basically you're surrounding the water or the, the water mill with eight spaces of water those eight spaces are actually equivalent to eight water sources so we know from this test that it doesn't have to be a water source directly next to the uh, water mill just water itself okay the next test we have a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube and we have a 5x5x5 five by five by five cube both with the generators directly in the middle water mill generators not generators water mills in the middle Man, I can't even talk so let's reset these I'm going to drop brand new water mills in the middle of both of these just to make sure that this thing operates the way it's supposed to and then we're going to connect bat boxes here whoops here and here now let's compare the output okay this is much faster than our first example much faster so 80 step over here 80 ish let's try this again this is about the speed 120 about the speed it took me to drop another one 120 so what we've learned here is that we can increase the output from a basic 3 by 3 by 1 but only to a 3 by 3 by 3 cube so beyond that space adding more water squares around the water mill does nothing you can surround the water mill completely with water minus the one cable space which could be at any position so you have <coughs> excuse me you have 16 8 on the top layer, 8 in the middle layer, and 9 on the bottom. So you have 25 water squares surrounding the water mill, which will give us the output. And again, the water mill does not, it actually does, there's a little, I think there's a little sliver there. I didn't think it, well, I don't know that it does, but let's check this other one. Nah, it's the same. So that it doesn't it's not like the windmill it doesn't fill when it's generating from flowing water or from water squares so you have two ways again let's just recap real quick you can drop buckets of water into the mill to generate power see there's no power I put four buckets in I have four thousand units if you put the water mill in the middle of water it will slowly generate energy but it will do so continuously without any other effort from you if you put it in a 3x3x3 three by three by three, right in the middle square of water you'll generate the most so just for fun I, I set up a couple of other things I set up a little uh, mill with um, what we already know is inferior output the outputs quicker but still slow and then I went ahead and even though this setup isn't practical you know you wouldn't want your bat box way down here in the middle unless you were putting the power out directly below I've got three by three by three cubes times four and hopefully this doesn't need reset yeah it's much quicker um, this is probably your ideal setup if you want water mill generation as a backup or as an additional input so I, I would imagine water mill generation is one of two things one you're either going to drop a water mill and either an appliance or a bat box and just dump some buckets in there you know just quick energy just to get you to the next stage or you know maybe you're going to drop one in a water stream like over here and um, just draw some energy you know, that might be an appliance that might be an electric oven or something and you're just going to let that slowly cook some stuff while you go do something else or you might drop something like this down and let it feed some energy and again water mills solar panels windmills all ultra low voltage ultra low output once you hit the bat box it's going to output low voltage and I'll just show you as an example uh, let's see let's put a macerator here for giggles macerator 
Let's start hooking up some tin. Let's go to daylight. And this is just going to be for fun. I can't guarantee it will be fun, but it's for fun. While supplies last. And now when we connect this, what do you think is going to happen? The output's on top. Output from bat box is the circle. What's going to happen? Drum roll. Oh, you don't need a drum roll. Burn it up. Okay, so you got 32 EU per tick. It even tells you here out 32 EU. These are 5 max. So they're safe to use with all these low output items because regardless of how many items you hook up, each one only outputs 5 or less. So the packets, there may be many packets passing through if you hook up lots uh, of units like our solar generators over here. There's many, many attached, but it's only a five or less packet, whereas the 32 coming out of the bat box is exactly that 32, and that'll just fry your, your tin. So remember to use tin appropriately. Um, other than that, there's one other example here, and this is like... This is like the poor man's, I don't know what you call it. It's like, it's like the Cadillac that's like 15 years old, and you buy some, uh, some fancy rims, and you think you got a real, a real humdinger there. So you got the water mill, you got a bat box, and you have a water pump. This is the IC, IC2 water pump. Just so happens that when it's got a chest next to it, huh, that's great. I don't have this fixed up like I should. Let's get some empty barrels. Uh, why me? Okay. So what happens is the pump automatically, and it has some energy in it, it pumps water from the unlimited water source. Don't use a 2x2 two because two, if it runs fast enough, it could actually empty it. It could ruin the permanency. So a, a three by three by one should work, and that's this is like this is again my poor man's recipe for an automatic water generation. Because believe it or not, it's going to fill the buckets faster. The energy it uses to fill the buckets is going to be less than you generate. So let me get a couple of other buckets here to prime our engine. Um, and the reason I say that, yeah, okay, I have two that'll start us. So what we have here, we have a bat box. It's already got some energy, 70, 78. Um, I was fooling with this earlier. Let's put two buckets in. We already know that that's going to build us about 2,000 units. So I can drop these in here. And they're going to fill. It's because the pump's running off of the energy that's in the bat box. But while they fill, I could be going back over here and dumping more water in. Now what it'll do is until this drops to a quarter there it did and it took the next bucket and I'm going to drop these back in here and they're going to fill. So basically with a lot of extra work your net sum is going to be gained energy while the pump fills the buckets. Which if you had a 2x2 two two right here that you'd filled you just turn around fill your bucket and pop it in. So. You know that's that's hardly worth the energy, but you know it's something to it's something else to to think about. I guess I don't know. Again, it's kind of like building giant watermill farms. It, you wouldn't do it except just for fun. Um, so that's really the basic tutorial on watermills. Uh, you know the few things that that are for certain about them, which is the best setup is a three by three by three for the most output, and um, that running water works it doesn't have to be an actual source block that this is equal to this with one source block properly routed which actually I don't really want to use bat boxes but let blue hello let's do that and change it here here Okay, that still one source block with the water mill next to it still surrounds the water mill with the required number of spaces. I would have used dirt, but I don't have a dirt block up, so I just used bat boxes. Any any block just to fill the hole. So that's it for water mill tutorial. 
I hope that you enjoyed. Please comment, please like, please subscribe, or don't, as you wish. Um, but I think that uh, as we progress here, hopefully, uh, you know, there's something about this renewable energy that's sinking in for us here and helping you with your technic experience. This is Maliner saying mahalo, mahalo, mahalo.